Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to The Diamond Net. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the most common unconscious motive that motivates someone to want to do shadow work. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the most common unconscious motive that motivates people to do shadow work. But first, let me give you a brief definition of what the shadow is and what shadow work is. So basically what the shadow is, is it's an area in the unconscious mind where we put parts of ourselves in order to go unconscious to them. So we split parts of ourself off from the conscious personality and we put them in the shadow and then we go unconscious to them. And these aspects don't just go away, they become their own autonomous little mini personality that operates underneath the surface of consciousness and can cause all sorts of different self-sabotaging behaviors and can put us through all sorts of, let's say, negative patterns that we don't want to be in. And so we can kind of think about the shadow as a dark closet in the human psyche where we lock away parts of ourselves that we want to forget about. And so shadow work is all about going into that dark closet in the psyche and bringing those parts of ourselves out into the light of consciousness and reincorporating them into our conscious personality, which is the part of ourselves that we call me or I, so that it's just another part of ourselves. And so shadow work is very important for being able to embrace all parts of yourself and to integrate them and to become more whole. Now, when it comes to this unconscious motive um, for why a lot of people get into shadow work, it tends to be something that when they come to it, that it actually backfires. It does the opposite of integration. And what that is, is trying to seek out shadow work for the purpose of self-improvement of some kind. So shadow work is not a self-improvement practice. Shadow work is a self-love practice. It's about embracing all parts of yourself, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and warts and all. And so for someone who comes to shadow work with a desire to improve themselves, or to fix themselves, or to change themselves, or to heal themselves in some ways, oftentimes that motive is coming from a deeper root of shame. So maybe a person doesn't feel good enough as they are, and so they say, oh, I know, I can do shadow work and I can fix myself and then I'll be good enough or I can do shadow work and I can heal myself and then I'll be good enough or I can do shadow work and I can fix myself and then I won't be broken anymore. And this is why seeking shadow work for self-improvement is an unconscious motive because it comes from these deeper feelings of shame that exist there in the unconscious. And it actually exacerbates the problem that was already there. So if you can imagine that, let's say, if I'm a person who has repressed parts of myself, and let's say I feel ashamed of this part of myself, so I'm constantly pushing away this part of myself, it's been repressed into the shadow. And so I'm very much resistant to it. Now. I look at shadow work and I go, ooh, I want to do shadow work, then I can improve myself. Now the unconscious motive is, ooh, then I can get rid of this aspect even more. Then I can come to actually finally fix this part of myself. I can finally transcend my shame. And so then I start doing shadow work with the unconscious motive to get rid of this part of myself that I'm ashamed of and to be less shameful. And, but instead of actually embracing that part of myself, I'm now pushing it away from myself even further because now I'm trying to fix it and I'm using shadow work to try to change that aspect. And so what I want to do instead is I want to come to embrace this part of myself, to be able to look at this part of myself, to validate it, and to really bring it in closer to myself, to come to love the parts of myself that I am ashamed of, not for the sake of self-improvement, not for the sake of changing myself or fixing myself, but just for the sake of loving and embracing myself and becoming more whole and recognizing the inherent imperfect perfection that's there in that wholeness. But when we seek shadow work from a desire to improve ourselves, it can be a little bit like the person who's constantly washing their hands because they're afraid of germs. So they're always trying to purify themselves and purify themselves and purify themselves to the point where they've washed their hands a hundred times a day and now their hands are starting to crack. And so that same kind of purification that somebody who obsessively washes their hands is doing, uh, when a person approaches shadow work from that perspective of, oh, shadow work will purify me, shadow work will help me self-improve, when we come about it from that perspective, it's a lot like we're just aggravating the shame that's already there. And that desire for purification tends to come from a sense of shamefulness and dirtiness. And so what you wanna do is you wanna actually embrace those shameful parts. 
Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is totally me. I'm approaching shadow work because I'm trying to improve myself. And you're thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing shadow work. What I would say is hang on because shadow work actually can really help you to become more whole in yourself and can actually help you come to accept these parts of yourself. And so what I would say is that if you notice yourself trying to seek shadow work for self-improvement, this is just more grist for the mill. So for anyone who sees this pattern in themselves, here's how you can practice shadow work in a more self-loving way. So to, to explain this, let me go back to my original explanation of what the shadow is and what shadow work is. So what the shadow is, is basically where we fragment off parts of the conscious personality and we put them in the shadow. And these parts of ourself become like little mini personalities. They're still very much us, you know, so like if I have an aspect that's repressed, it's still very much me, but it's functioning as its own autonomous individual that's separate from the conscious personality. And so when I've repressed these parts, of myself, I now have lots of different shadow aspects, right? And so some of those shadow aspects are more vulnerable aspects, which are aspects that have bore the brunt of a particular unmet need or trauma. And other aspects are protector aspects that have specifically come up to play a protective role toward me as the conscious personality or toward one or multiple of the shadow aspects. And so with this framework in mind, we want to, if we notice ourselves trying to use shadow work for self-improvement, instead of thinking about it as the conscious personality wanting to use shadow work for self-improvement, we can unblend that part of ourselves out and say, oh, this aspect of me, you know, wants to use shadow work for self-improvement. And so unblending actually in internal family systems work is where you start to see your conscious personality and these shadow aspects as separate. And so if you're like, oh no, I, as the conscious personality, am seeking to self-improve through shadow work oh no, I shouldn't be doing that, maybe I shouldn't do shadow work. Instead, think, oh, I have an aspect of myself that's trying to improve myself. I have an aspect of myself that feels shame. I have an aspect of myself that's trying to fix myself using shadow work. And at that point, you don't have to fight with any of those tendencies. You can be unconditionally self-loving and self-accepting of that part of yourself that feels like it needs to search out inner work remedies for its own shame. You can practice lots of compassion toward this aspect. And that way, when you've un you're unblended from it, you're able to really um, practice shadow work from a state of accepting the wholeness of that which is. So basically, before, if you're looking through the lens of, oh, I'm trying to, as the conscious personality seek shadow work for self-improvement, then it's the case that the conscious personality and the parts of itself that it's trying to get rid of are at odds in some way. And oh, I have to sacrifice this part of myself to make sure that I, as the conscious personality, am not pushing this part away. Instead, recognize that there's another aspect of yourself that's in a clash with this other aspect. So this aspect is trying to become more lovable and this aspect feels um, like shame and so this aspect is trying to repress and push away and get rid of the other aspects so that it can like absolve itself of shame. And so when you recognize that this is a dynamic going on between shadow aspects as opposed to the way you feel as the conscious personality, you can function as basically the good parent in this situation where you can come to love and accept and be very, very compassionate to both of these aspects feelings and both of these aspects motivations without trying to, uh, without almost pitting them against one another and saying, oh, it can only be one way and not the other. And so with both the part of you that feels shame and the part of you that's trying to fix yourself using shadow work, you don't want to try to fix or change or improve either of these aspects. Simply seek to understand them and exercise compassion toward them and be present with them. And in this case, these two parts would be coming off of the same root. So there's the part that feels ashamed, and then there's the part that's trying to heal the shame through fixing oneself, which isn't gonna work, but deep down there's this deeper shame. Maybe there's a feeling of being unwanted. And so the question in that case would be, how can you as the conscious personality start to make these, feel, these aspects feel wanted? And basically, if there's something else there oh, these aspects feel um, not good enough. How do you make these aspects feel good enough as they are? Or maybe this shamed aspect feels bad. And so how can you as the conscious personality come to 
but see the goodness in both of these aspects. So basically what you want to do is as the conscious personality, you want to validate these aspects in whichever ways they feel invalid. And so if you have an aspect that feels ashamed because it's like, maybe it's like, oh, I'm not good enough. How can you make both of these aspects feel like they're good enough? Um, or if the shamed aspect is like, oh, I'm, I'm bad. How can you recognize the goodness in these aspects as the conscious personality? Or if these aspects feel like they're insignificant, how can you as the conscious personality make these aspects feel significant? Because this one that feels shamed is like, you know, feeling directly in those feelings. And this one that's trying to fix yourself is trying to prove yourself worthy or significant or good or whatever it happens to be, you know, that it's trying to do through trying to approach shadow work from a fixing lens. And so that's what you want to do in a nutshell. What you want to do is you want to take that meta perspective where you're the conscious personality and the part of yourself that wants to fix yourself is a shadow aspect along with the other aspects that you have, including the part of yourself that feels ashamed. And then you want to reflect to the part of yourself that feels ashamed and the aspect that wants to fix you through shadow work. And you want to reflect to them their validity through whichever lens um, they feel invalid through. And overall, whenever you're approaching shadow work, you want to ask yourself the question, am I approaching shadow work, you know, to love myself or to fix myself? And if the answer is to fix myself, you want to try out this practice. Anyway, so that's all I have for you for now. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, click the like button down below and subscribe and leave me a comment down below. I also wanted to let you know that my husband, Richard Kodai, actually made a movie and he's gotten it distributed and it's in its pre order period right now. And it's out on Apple TV, on iTunes. It's called Room Zero. And we want to give it the best possible chances of getting in the top 10 ranking on Apple TV, which is a number that I can't tell you, but it is also a doable number. And so we're trying to give his movie the best possible chance at getting pre-ordered by the most amount of people. So for anyone who pre-orders his movie between now and March 18th, you can actually get a free complimentary session from me to go with it. And so that's a free complimentary 30 minute coaching session. Session. And so if that's something that you would be interested in, then you can go and click the link down below in the description box and in the comments. And again, you can order it either on Apple TV or on iTunes. Anyway, that's it for now. And until next time, keep becoming more you. Mm -hmm.